Hey everyone, today I'm going to be talking about critical question one, how sports injuries managed, uh, how sports injuries classified and managed. Uh, this is part three of the part four series and today we'll be looking at heart tissue injuries as well as how to manage these heart tissue injuries. So I've laid out a series of questions which are, are quite simple and cover the syllabus content. First thing we're going to be looking at is about fractures and dislocations and then we're going to be moving on to the assessment for medical attention as well as immobilization. So my quest, first question says, what are heart tissue injuries? So what you need to remember is a heart tissue injury is any damage to either the bones or the teeth. That is the simplest way I can put it, and I think that's just the, the main gist of this entire part where you need to know what heart tissue injuries are. Heart tissue injuries are just any damage done to either the bones or the teeth. Now we'll actually look into what type of damage there, there can be. So the first type of damage is fractures. Now fractures, they come in many different types. There's a, a few different types that you, you might need to know, but you just need to generally know what fractures are and uh, how they actually are heart tissue injuries. So I'd like to define as fractures as some sort of a crack or some sort of a, a break inside your bone. That's what I'd define fractures as. So uh, either a crack or a break inside your inside bones. And obviously, that classifies as some sort of damage to the bones, and therefore is a heart tissue injury. Is a heart tissue injury. And additionally, what we need to know is uh, just approximately three different types of fractures. So the first type I'm going to be talking about is simple fractures. So the name pretty much actually uh, tells you everything that you need to actually know about that uh, fractures. A simple fracture is when there's a clean clean uh, uh, a break when, when when it's been when a bone has been broken completely cleanly and com like and from the bottom to the end of the bone has been completely broken so there's no sort of um, bits and pieces of the bone just lying around it's a complete break and it's very clean so a clean and complete complete breaking of bones. That's what a simple fracture is. Um, the the next one I'd probably remember is compound fractures. Now compound fractures occur when you have uh, bits and pieces of the bones scattered around after it's been broken. So it's not actually a clean break. It's it's a, you can almost say it's a dirty break because it's bits and pieces of the bone just around. It's uh, bits and pieces. Oh, sorry about the spelling. Pieces. Bone. Around the break. And um, lastly, I would like to say the, the last thing you actually need to remember for fractures would be um, hairline fractures. So hairline fractures are, I'll just write it here. Hairline fractures are actually the the ones which have the most uh, least effect. They have the least effect on on you, because sometimes you can even have hairline fractures without noticing it, and they're not actually that um, painful or characterizable. Hairline fractures are a microscopic fracture, and uh, th 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 these type of fractures can go undetected for long periods of times. And the only real issue with hairline fractures is that it can lead to bigger fractures. So I'll just say a microscopic fracture. Okay, uh, I'd just like to add on that for the different types of fractures, you don't actually need to know in that much detail. Uh, I've been looking at the previous HSC questions and all that. They just want you to know in general what a heart tissue injury is and what a fracture is. If you can't remember all three types of fractures, that's okay. Just just understand what a, generally what a fracture is. It's just some extra information just in case because this, uh, this dot point doesn't actually tell us what we need to do in detail. So might as well cover a little more detail just in case. Okay, so what are uh, fractures characterized through? So you can just imagine in real life, if a fracture happens, what's actually happening? You can obviously feel a lot of pain. You can feel immobilization. And what else can you feel? You can feel, um, you know, uh, if a fracture actually happens, you can also feel loss of functionality. Uh, 
additionally, when a fracture happens, you can feel deformity or swelling. Ah, sorry about that. And swelling. And lastly, uh, you'd probably also hear a noise when the fracture happens. Okay, so now we'll move on to dislocations. Uh, we've covered fractures in not that much detail, but just pretty much anything you need to know for the stop point. And now for dislocations, it's slightly different to a fracture, because a dislocation, well, it's actually very different to a fracture, because a dislocation isn't actually the breaking of the bone, but rather the displacement and the, the, when the bones or joints are forced out of place. So I'll just write that here now. Okay, so when, when these uh, bones are forced out of place, there's a few things that you need to uh, think about. The first thing is that whenever these bones are uh, forced out of place, you should never ever relocate your bone. Because <laughs> all that's going to do is it's going to lead to more damage to the surrounding ligaments. So you don't want to relocate it yourself. And the other thing would probably be is seek medical attention. Immediately. Because th the real way to actually have these dislocations treated is getting a medical professional to relocate these bones which have been out of place from the joints. Um, and I'd just like to add on that dislocations, they're usually due to uh, direct forces. So I've talked about direct forces in my previous videos, and they're, they're due to direct forces. Um, okay, so as you can imagine, these dislocations can lead to a few things. So the first thing it could lead to is loss of function. Deformity. And additionally, it can lead to pain and swelling. Okay, perfect. So now we'll move on to how we actually manage hard tissue injuries. It's, it's quite simple. There's not really much you need to remember. It's just the entire, the entire gist of this is that to manage heart tissue injuries, you need to visit the doctor, you need to get a referral, you need to go to someone who's a medical professional for help because heart tissue injuries aren't that, easily to aren't that easy to treat themselves um, by just a normal individual. So the main, the main crux of this is that it needs to be treated by qualified medical professionals and uh, a fracture or a dislocated joint has to be taken uh, for either an x-ray or you know just just a general consult uh, a, a consulting uh, thing with doctors to make sure that there's no further damage done to the ligaments surrounding it or you know anything else so it's 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 quite obvious that for the assessment for medical attention means that we need to get referral from medical professionals You need to also have, you know, an x-ray, suppose. Um, and it has to be immediate, because if you leave these fractures and dislocations uh, around for quite a time, it can lead to more damage itself. And th the thing is that we, we need to do this assessment for medical attention just to ensure that uh, there's no further damage do being done. Okay. Um, lastly, I'd just like to talk about the immobilization approach. So, when the immobilization approach is, ju it's just exactly what it means. It's it's making sure that the bone or dislocated area doesn't actually move, and it's stopping movement in that area. So, stopping movement. In injured location and by doing that what you're actually doing is you're preventing further damage
once again, I'd like to stress that this actual part of the syllabus isn't isn't actually um, focused in that much of detail because it's just supposed to be something that's supposed to be general knowledge, very vague, very brief. I've done this video in a, a lot more detail than needed, and just pretty much remember the the very basics of this because that's all you really need to answer any questions related to this. Um, not once in my life have I seen in the last few HSC papers or even more than that uh, any questions which go into intense detail about fractures or dislocations. It's just a general definition and you just need to know the general uh, the general idea about assessment as well as immobilization for managing these heart tissue injuries. Okay, thanks for watching and the next video will be about toe taps and how to actually um, assess these injuries.